What's going on guys? In this video, we'll be going over the basics of HTML and some of the uh, basic tags and elements. We'll be also giving some examples of uh, beautiful soup as examples of some of these HTML basics. So it's prudent to really get familiar with uh, some of these uh, HTML tags and elements because if you don't, everything is going to seem really overwhelming. This is a uh, market watch. Now if we just look at the page source. This is all the HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. This is all of the web page code. And as you can see, a lot of this looks overwhelming. There's a lot of div, span, class, UL. Um, so exactly what do we need to scrape to get the, the contents that we're looking for? It can be a little overwhelming when you first look at the stuff. But if we get some familiarity with HTML, it's not going to be as bad because then we'll know what portions we need to focus on and what parts we don't really care about. We don't really care about the styling portions. Okay. All right. So generally a website is made up of uh, three different parts. You have the HTML, which holds all the contents. Then you have the CSS, which is the, the code for the style of the uh, contents. And you have JavaScript, which is mainly for the interactivity uh, between the website and the user. We're not going to be focusing on JavaScript because with beautiful soup, you can't really interact with the JavaScript portions. So we'll need Selenium for that. And I plan to make some tutorials uh, later on down the road on Selenium. On this video, we're going to focus on HTML. So HTML is not a programming language. It's a markup language. And it's used to tell your browser how to display the web pages you visit. It's not a programming language, so there's not much you have to learn. I get a basic understanding of HTML. It's more than enough for web scrape. So let's just uh, look at the basic frame of a website. So a basic frame of a website has the HTML tags. So these are called tags. Whatever's in between these two brackets are usually called tags or elements. So we have two tag. Uh, we have the two HTML tags, which are usually the outermost uh, tags of a website. So within the HTML tags, we usually have a head and a body. So the HTML is the the outermost, and then the next layer is a head and body. So the Head and body are considered considered like siblings because they're on the same level. The body and head are on the uh, same layer. They're just not part of each other, but they're next to each other. So like siblings, brothers, and HTML would be considered the parents because they're uh, one layer on top of uh, the head and body. So within the head, usually there's uh, the, the title, title of the web page, and within the body is all the all the content. So the content is mainly what we're looking for. So now let's go to the next part. So a body usually holds um, titles. So these H1, H2, H3, H4 are, are headers or headings. And H1 is the biggest and H2, H3, H4 are, are smaller and smaller. So it's almost uh, as above, we have the, the parent, then you have like the sun, the parent is the, the outermost, then you have uh, the next layer, the next layer, the next layer, so sublayers. So in the same way, H1 is the outermost layer, H2 is a sublayer, H3 is another sublayer, H4 is another sublayer. This deals with heading, not the basic framework of a website. So I've actually prepared something for you guys so you could see the difference between H1 and H2. All right, so if you go to the site www.w3schools.com, I will link this in my uh, description. But if you click on try yourself, you can see the difference between each of the headings. So H1 is the biggest and H6 is the smallest. Um, so yeah, these are the headings and you can use multiple headings. You can have multiple H2 headings within a, a framework website as well as a multiple H1 headings. So let's just go back to this portion which is by uh, Web Scraping Jupyter Notebook. And now we're going to talk about probably the most important part about HTML when it comes to web scraping. And these are the common tags and elements. So I've listed some of the most common ones that we should know. And here they are. And this one on the bottom is just a table. And these are sort of sub elements within the table. Okay, so we'll start off with the first one, which is paragraph. When you, whenever you see the text paragraph, that means you'll see text. Paragraphs usually hold text and if it's an article, it's going to hold a lot of text. So if you're looking for the text, say if you're looking for the bulk of the article, the contents of an article, you should always look for P. And there's multiple, multiple, multiple P's within, within a web page, especially if it's an article. So now we're going to go back to the market, market watch page that I had. Here we go, market watch. All right, I'm going to close this. Okay, now, so we have this, uh, this web page. Sorry everything's in Japanese. Uh, I was studying Japanese a couple years ago. 
I've sort of made everything Japanese, and I'm not really sure exactly how to convert everything back into English, but this should be no problem for you guys.、Um, in this case, this is inspect, and this is looking at the source. So we're going to look at the、uh, source, not inspect, we're going to look at the,、uh, the source. So we do this. Now, Control F, and I already have the、uh, search term here, but if you hit Control F, so that's Control F, you get this little bar here. You can type in this P because we want to find the P tag within this、uh, web page. So just click that, press enter. And if you press enter, here we go. So here's some text Emotion can drive spending on necessities. Okay. Here we go. So that's the first part. So this text is,、uh, we found, we we're able to find this text. Now we're interested in finding the bulk of this text of this article, the contents of this article. So let's go back to what the、uh, HTML portion of this、uh, web page, the framework. And we're just going to click down and scroll through each of the P's. We found 17 P's within this、uh, website's HTML code. And if we scroll down to the third P, as you can see, It turns out that all Americans, regardless of income, blah, 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 we found a big portion of the、uh, text. If we click through several other P's, we can see that here we go. This is probably the rest of the text of the article. So the P holds most of the text of an article. And that's the first element,、uh, a P. All right, let's, so let's check out the next element. Okay. So next, next element that we have is、uh, D, div, which stands for division. So, div and we'll also go over this one, section. So, div and section are pretty similar. What they do is just they divide the code into many different sections. But the thing with div is that it's, it's more、uh, of a styling、uh, division. So, the div is divided based on style. So, certain divs will have certain style. If you want the layout of a certain portion to be one way, you put everything in one div. If you want the layout to be another way, you put it in another div. So, a div is just a A way of organizing your code based on style. And then sections are organizing、uh, the website not based on style, but based on some other、uh, factor. So I'm assuming maybe they want to divide probably articles, you know, have articles in one part, maybe some, some stats or some numbers in another part, or maybe some headers. Section has nothing to do with style, it's dividing up a web page, sort of organizing a web page based on another factor. While div is organizing a web page、uh, based on style. Uh, that's the basic difference.、Um, we don't really need to know the details, we just need to know that div is dividing up the contents and so is section. So now I will go over、um, attributes. So these divs have attributes. So this portion is called an attribute.、So、attributes are a very important thing. The first、uh, element you see here div, p,、um, sections, these are all called elements or、uh, tags. Now, tags and elements are usually labeled. They're labeled either by IDs or they might have another semi label called classes. So, in this case, we're looking at an ID. So, this div has an ID site name. So, this、uh, ID is the name of the attribute, and this site name is the value of the attribute. So, these attributes are a, a great way for us to find、uh, certain portions of a code. So, in this case,、uh, div has an,、uh, an attribute called ID. IDs are unique. Uh, the values of an ID are unique. In this case, the value site name could only be used once throughout the web page. When you see a div tag, you usually see、uh, two types of、uh, attributes. Most of the time, you'll see something called classes, and other times, you'll see IDs. For us as web scrapers, IDs are a little better because each ID value is unique. As opposed to classes, classes can be reused a lot. If there's a class and we search for the div and the class name, we might get.、Um, Multiple instances of that particular div and class. So the div is the element, the ID is the attribute, but there are many types of attributes. So we're going to go、uh, look at a couple of other attributes. So let's take a look at this attribute、um, title. So we have P, which is the tag name, and title as an attribute. So the title seems to hold some sort of text. In this case, I'm, I'm a tooltip. Then another type of attribute we have is SRC, which holds the The image or the image, the link to the image. So the tag we have is IMG, which is, stands for image, and the SRC is the attribute to the image, which holds either the image or a link to the image. Width and height are also attributes of the tag IMG, but for us as web scrapers, we don't really have to worry about the width and height. 
Um, another important tag that we should attribute that we should know is href, which usually holds links. So the tag a will hold a link in the attribute href. So we'll take a look at um, the market watch code once again. Okay, so I'm going to go into, uh, uh, all right, so take a look here. So earlier we had search, search for P. Now I'm just going to show you div. So there's many, many, many instances of div you'll find um, that's dividing up the code. So as you can see here, we have div uh, class equals lame content wrapper, uh, latest news. In this case, uh, we, here's a div and the uh, class and this time it has a class. Here's a div with an ID. So remember, ID is a, a unique name, so this will be easy to find. Class doesn't have to be unique, so there could be many instances of this class. Now, uh, what I want to do is actually, I want to introduce you to some uh, some Python code, and then we'll just try to uh, scrape a section, a div section. I just want to give you a, a brief introduction to how you could locate whatever sections you're looking for. So since this video has gone on a little longer than I expected, uh, we will continue from the next video. So the next video, uh, we'll be using some Python code to go over some examples, and then we'll start going over the rest of the uh, tags and elements.